So in this video, I'm going to be looking at the Pioneer SX590 receiver. This was uh, released in uh, 1978, and I'm going to be evaluating it in a 1970s system, along with the Gold Ring Lenko GL75 turntable. Now, these receivers consisted usually of an amplifier, a tuner, and had a built-in phono stage. The tuner is FM AM and all analog and these receivers were the heart of a stereo system from around that period where basically you just added uh, speakers, a turntable or even a cassette deck. Now the front of this receiver is finished in a beautiful brushed aluminium and it has walnut side panels. The quality of the switch gear on this and all the, the knobs was absolutely first class as were the meters and all the detailing on the, on the front. They really did put a lot of effort into producing these fronts on these receivers. I've opened this up a few times to do a bit of work on the inside and they're not so pretty on the inside but obviously you don't generally look at that. It's uh, the front that you're interested in. Um, I decided to put together a 1970 system to see how good this sounded and I, um, I compared it against a modern system. I also was using the GL75 turntable into the fantastic phono stage built into the Pioneer SX590. It's moving magnet only, so I had a Shure M55E stylus on the uh, cartridge on the GL75 turntable. And this was typical for a, a 1970s setup. Pioneer made a huge range of these vintage receivers. Some of them were very, very powerful indeed, um, over 100 watts per channel and had a lot more features. And this one, although it's only a 20 watt amplifier, has quite a healthy output and sounds a lot more powerful than the 20 watts that uh, it has. Uh, this one was a middle of the range product. They can still be found today quite widely and they were out at 150 to 200 pounds, maybe a little bit more in very good condition. They're beautifully built with a modern IC MOSFET FM front end and the FM part of this tuner sounds absolutely superb. It's dead quiet and very sensitive and it does pull in stations very, very easily and it produces a fantastic quality FM experience. As you can see, it has direct readout wattage VU meters and a tuning meter. It has a beautifully manufactured switch controls, all in metal, I think aluminium. There's a treble, bass and balance and a mono stereo button. And it also has a loudness button, which is very common for these receivers at that time. And it boosted the whole frequency spectrum, I think, from top end to bottom. It also has an air headphone output. So it's a very, very flexible unit. And it also has two speaker outputs. So you can put uh, two sets of speakers on this. It has tank-like build quality. And the controls are beautifully weighted. Tuning knob in particular has a lovely feel to it and a lovely weight. They really did put a lot of engineering into these to make them feel very good to use. But more importantly, they really did make them sound very, very good indeed. Now, by today's standards, they're probably mid-range centric. They're very pleasing to listen to. They're probably not as detailed as a modern system, but certainly when I compare it against my more modern system, it doesn't sound 
as detailed and as open, but it does sound very, very, very pleasant to listen to. Now, these sort of products nowadays would cost thousands of pounds to build. And indeed, there are a few vintage style tuners out there, receivers, I think Yamaha do one, and they do, they, they do cost a lot of money, um, and they would have been quite expensive back then. I used a GL75 turntable with an M55 cartridge with this and this combination into the movie magnet phono stage of the Pioneer was extremely good. It gave a very weighty, detailed, rich and beautiful analog sound. And I could easily listen to this for long periods go through all those 1970s records you've got and you know you've got a perfect beautiful analog setup here and I would be very happy to have this as a second system which indeed I do it doesn't as I say convey quite the experience of a modern system which is a bit more forensic a bit more detailed obviously but in terms of a listening experience, it's very, very pleasant indeed. Now, this combination was also very common for the 1970s. Um, a lot of dealers sold this combination. And it was more towards the top end of the sort of turntable market. And the sound quality from this setup was extremely good. But the reason I wanted to listen to this in the uh, with the receiver was because the phono stage in these Pioneer receivers was extremely good indeed. They were movie magnet only but they were well engineered and they sounded absolutely superb. Obviously the better the input, um, the better the cartridge, the better the sound you got out of these but I've used this for a number of years now as a second system and it really does sound very very good now these turntables and these cartridges are still available um, they can be picked up for a matter of 100 or 200 pounds cartridges the same they can be picked up for around 100 150 pounds there's not that many on the market nowadays but they can be still found at the time when they came out they were, as I say, towards the top end of the turntable market. And the M55E was a really high-end uh, Shure cartridge and it sounded absolutely superb. And in this combination, it gave a stellar performance. The speakers I used for this setup were some Spender SP2 speakers, the original ones, the Mark ones. Now, although these were not technically 1970 speakers, they came out in the early 80s, their DNA goes back to the 70s and back to the BC1 speaker. Now, these speakers, even by today's standards, still sound absolutely superb. They've got a beautiful mid-range. So in combination with the Pioneer receiver and the GL75 turntable, you know, we got a fantastic sound out of this system. It would be very good even by today's standards and I do absolutely love listening to this setup. Such a joy to use, even comparing it to my state-of-the-art sort of modern system, I still think it's not, you know, far off. It, 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 it does lose out a little bit in certain areas, but in others, I think it can almost sound better. The mid-range, as I say, is very warm and very pleasing to listen to. And it has a very rich analog sound. Everything was just sounded just right. Honestly, you, you can't go wrong with these old receivers. The only word of caution I would make would be to be sure that they were electrically safe, being checked out um, before you use them. 
they are getting a bit old now and also to make sure everything's working okay on these. They can be looked at and repaired and have new components fitted if there are problems but not everything is available. They can be restored so I think as a piece of hi-fi to have in your house nowadays they still cut it with anything that's out there. As I say they've got this beautiful appearance okay it's classified as vintage now but just look at the finish on that aluminium and on those controls they're a joy to use they're a joy to listen to and I'd recommend to anyone to think about buying one of these make sure it's obviously in good working order before and but um, yeah and using it as part of a stereo setup so that's my take on the Pioneer receiver SX590 and thank you very much indeed for watching.